It's the Cares None Be Dope Podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None, and I got a special guest today, Truth the Barber Artist. What's up, babe? What's going on? Hey, what's going on, Chris? What's poppin'? Pleasure. Huh? I said it's a pleasure to meet you, brother. Oh, man. You know, we talked before. Hey, so I want to ask you really quick. How mm-hmm. come we ain't did this shit sooner? Man, I don't know. I think our schedules, especially mine, Mine was uh, pretty crazy, but um, yeah, I'm glad we finally made it happen. Yeah, well, what's up with your podcast? You know, my podcast is still going on, but my schedule's been really crazy, and I had a few guests that I had lined up, but you know, a couple of them canceled for whatever reason. So, you know, I just really haven't had time to catch up with it. But I plan on doing an episode soon. Yeah, hey, let me know. I'll be on yours whenever you're ready, man. As a matter of fact, I want to get my ass out to New York. I was almost there. I almost saw you. Yeah, yeah, I remember. As a matter of fact, you were out here, and we just couldn't link up. I think you were, you had stuff going on. You were in Jersey, right? Yeah, we stayed at uh, in Jersey, right across the uh, the river. Yeah, yeah. So, so which was still what? Which is still what? Like forty minutes from you, something like that, an hour or some shit. Yeah, about that long. Yeah. So how? I, so how long you been? You been, you been cutting? Uh, well, I've been cutting going on 37 years, man. <laughs> oh, shit. Turn up. Yeah. Yeah. 37 years. It's, it's a long time. I mean, you got some talent, too, man. This ain't even just I, how I, I, I'm trying to think about how I first saw you, how I first came across you. And I remember thinking, like, you, you do the designs, like, really fresh. Right. right, right. I think I came across you, man, and I followed you. Oh, well, I'll take that there. I, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I, saw, I saw one of your videos and it was hilarious, man. It's the one with the guy with the jerry curls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the fucking Cleotis? I call him Cleotis. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm like, man, I got to follow this guy. He's over here with the with the, the drippy jerry curls. <laughs> I need to bring that fool back. I need to bring that fool back. I ain't done something with him in a long time, man. Yeah, you yeah, have to, man. <laughs> well, let me ask you, man. Wh- when it comes to content creating what uh-huh. do you say that you do let's let's let the people know who truth who's truth the barber artist truth the barber artist is uh a, a master barber a celebrity barber and i'm also a teacher at the barber school and i'm also a state examiner who uh tests people for the barber's license in new york and i just blend it in comedy just to raise the uh, the level of my brand, you know, I, I started doing skits originally to promote a barbershop that I had previously owned. And from there on out, it just snowballed. Well, I feel like, which is, I feel like a lot of businesses should be getting into that world. Cause that's a good way to get your shit seen. It is. It's great promotion. And, uh, and your shit actually be funny too. I noticed that you, uh, you blowing up on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, TikTok is a very, very unique animal. You what know, you it took it took me a long time to figure it out. It took a lot of my videos to get taken down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just the algorithms, how they work and everything. It's a very complex platform, but it's a good one. It's a, it's a very, very uh, organic platform, if you so- know what I mean. Uh, I think I do have an idea what you mean. For the people, including myself, who's trying to grow their TikTok, in your words, what would you say you've learned and what would be the advice you'd give for people? Well, if you want to grow on TikTok, the first thing I would tell you is get all the filth, try to keep the filth out. Because TikTok is like that that Christian parent that doesn't let you do much when you're in the house. You know, you got to be careful with your language. You got to be careful. I mean, not so much the language, but just what you're visually showing people, because there's a lot of kids on TikTok. So if you're you're showing abuse, abuse to kids, like making fun of kids or slapping them up, they're probably going to take your video down. Uh, for the ladies, they're probably going to take down anything that you show with too much skin. You know, but you know uh, what you can show on TikTok, though? <laughs> you maybe can't show the skin, but you can show some titties, though. You can show that, yeah, like, but you know, the, the booty, I, I feel like that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're very strict with the booty, though. You can't show too much skin with the booty for some reason. So, really, I didn't even know that. 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of the girls, that's why a lot of the girls just say, you know what, screw it. They just wear the spandex when you do the TikToks. So, yeah. And a lot of my videos got taken down for uh, just like adult content, like mm. adult jokes. So, so, you know, they, they try to take those down too. Like cocaine jokes or, you know, anything like that type <laughs> yeah, of Yeah, I, I got the jokes too, shit. Yeah. <laughs> They're the funny jokes to me, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. Instagram like, let you, Instagram let you get wild on those a little bit. Uh, Instagram, forget it. They 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 ghetto man. Get Instagram just <laughs> it's, that's like the platforms. That's yeah, like the it's crazy. Yeah. It's interesting you say that about TikTok because when I tell people and I I don't take my own advice on this, but that is like the most organic. Like they're giving away the most organic reach. It seems like right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anybody who has a business or they have music or anything, that's the best platform to be on. And, you know, I never took TikTok serious. I thought it was for kids. And I just thought, you know, this is a very sorry, you know, little childish musically musical. Yeah, just do it. yeah, yeah. Like, like this, but, you know, you know who got me into it? Uh, my friend, Chris Ace. She's yeah. the Harlem, uh, the, she's oh. actually clients, the, the Harlem yeah. Globetrotter. Yeah. Former Harlem Globetrotter. Right now, I think she's up to a couple million followers. On TikTok? Yeah, yeah. She's really blowing up on there. And it's it's trickling down into her Instagram now. So she got those followers on Instagram. She promotes on TikTok and she promotes her Instagram through the TikTok. So it's just pretty smart. Right. So, you know, she's she's uh, doing very well with that. She said, yo, true. She kept telling me every time I walk ahead, you got to get on TikTok. You got to get on TikTok. You got to get. And I said, you know what? Nah, it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. But then when she had a million followers, I said, whoa. <laughs> sponsorships, more, more stuff, people coming out. I was like, yo, this is probably the move, you know? So I tried it out and uh, my first few videos didn't go too well, but I think my first uh, six videos after I did my seventh one, I think it hit a million, a million views. And I said, whoa, this is serious. Yeah, it's this for real, right? Um, I would say the cool thing about yours is, is you have a niche and that's like the whole, the barber game, right? And how you've mastered yeah. it. So you, a lot of your shit is tutorial type shit, letting people know what's going on, right? Well, most of my stuff is, I try to shed some light on the funny parts, the funny aspects of the barber world. So the, a lot of the things that people don't know about barbers or barber shops that happen, I try to put, shed some light on that. And I combine it with, you know, sometimes I bring in the ladies and I, you know, mix it in with that. Yeah, I see you be having fun with it. Uh, <laughs> hey, when I come to New York, man, I'm going to have to have you cut me up, shit. I'm looking at your beard right now. Your beard is clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you, man. And, you know, I, I try to keep it shaped up, especially now, you know. It's so I dark, nigga. Your shit dark, and, and it looks yeah. look, look, look lustrous. It looks lustrous. Like, your shit look healthy. <laughs> I use all the beard oils and all that good stuff, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I be trying to, you ain't got no gray. You got no grays? Yeah, I got a couple, but you know, I cover them up. You know, I cover them up very, very well. You know? you know, I had a couple ladies tell me they was like, "You should keep the salt and pepper." Yeah, they like that stuff. Some of them like that stuff, you know. Yeah, but, I, I'm but, like, you know what? Let me let. Me, I got like a little, you know, I got a little couple in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, but we do what's called enhancements. A lot of the barbers, uh, when we shape ourselves up, we do enhancements, which is it's like a dye, and then it just makes the lines look sharper. And These so, are like the Beijing. Yeah, they, but they have different different types of stuff, you know. And so when that when you put it on, when you apply it, it just kind of goes into the hair too, and it just removes the grays. Let me ask you this: Give me some tips mm -hmm. on how to keep my shit right. Like, just what what tips you like? If I'm I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to keep my beard and my hair, and you know what? Especially for black men. So do right. you have? Because I know like my sometimes my shit get a little dry and I don't know what specific products are best for me. What, are, what is your advice on that? Well, the first thing I will tell you absolutely 100 percent is to lotion your face every night before you go to bed. What lotion? I, uh, one of my favorites is intensive care Vaseline. OK. And especially for a man, you know, us men, a lot of us, we don't really moisturize our face we don't put anything on our face so to try to preserve your skin and, and the you know for your skin to look youthful 
I always suggest to my clients uh, to put on a lotion before bed. And sometimes when I, uh, you know, I give them a haircut, I offer them the service too, just to apply the, the, uh, the lotion after I do a shave or whatever the case is. And then um, for your hair, uh, you want to put also uh, oil treatments are good for your hair. Uh, hot oil treatments are good. Moisturizers, uh, great conditioners. They have a lot of uh, good conditioners out there. So, you know, do you have any brands that you suggest specifically for black <clears throat> men or does it not really matter? Uh, I don't think it really matters, but uh, they do have a lot of lines, a lot of lines for uh, for black men. It's just up to you. You know, you would have to do your research and find out which one you would prefer. You know, I know lately I've been kind of leaning towards the as a shea moisture. Is that a good brand? How do <laughs> you feel about them? Shea Moisture, I'm not really too familiar with them. I do know about African Pride. They have a lot of good stuff out. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I have heard of them. I haven't had none, but you say they, okay. Yeah, they have some great oils, some great uh, scalp moisturizers. They have a lot of good uh, products. So I could vouch for them because I actually used to use a little bit. Of, I used to have uh, braids back in the days. So, no. so <laughs> you know, did. <laughs> I had the cornrows. Okay, so, okay. So my braider, she used to use that stuff on me and it smelled amazing. And I'm like, what is that? She said, oh, it's African pride. I'm like, oh, wow, it smells delicious, you know? Good. So, wait, so what's your ethnicity? Well, I'm Puerto Rican, man. But when my hair grows, see, I got the best of both worlds. When my hair grows to a certain length, it gets curly and I could wet it and it's soft. But then when it grows really, really long and it's dry, I could get an afro, man. Like it's an afro. You, you could get like a legit. A legit, <laughs> pick. I could pick it out. So I'm like, man, this is the best, this is the perfect ethnicity, right? I get the best of both worlds. Now, what do you? What about? What about like hairlines? Because that's something that I deal with, right? And it, I think it's some. It's just inevitable for some people. Is it things that people could do to maybe help <clears throat> that before it gets there, and then once it gets there, is there anything to help after, or once it's gone, it's pretty much gone. Your hairlines? Yeah. Uh, they have so many treatments right now. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, scalp pigmentation. I've seen some shit, but like, can you explain like what that is? So scalp pigmentation is basically tattooing. What they do is they tattoo your hairline. So it's pretty much they do tiny dot, 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 dot on your uh, scalp. And then what they do is you can pick a fade or you can pick a Caesar or whatever it is you want to do. And then you can pick where you want to place the hairline. And then uh, what they do is they, they keep dotting the tattoos uh, on your hairline or whatever. Some guys just do it just to fill in little light spots or bald spots, uh, scars. Some guys are really bald and they just want to look like they have some hair. So, yeah. How, what, what, is the, like, what is the pricing on that? What, what, would you, what would you think the pricing? Man, some of the guys I spoke to, uh, they charge in like $1,400, two, two stacks. And up for the finished job, or is that like a you got to go back a few times? I think it's like a treatment. Yeah, they, they do it multiple times. Okay. So, I I would assume it's multiple sessions. Like I'm a former tattoo artist myself, so Look I would. Here, Look at you. <laughs> so so yeah, so that that's something I'm pretty sure you have to keep coming back for. What? And then you have other stuff like uh, you have the man weave, uh, which is when they put the adhesion and then they stick on the hair and then you know it looks like a real you know your real hair but it's a wig is now what are, wait let's go back to the last one what are some cons is there, in your opinion any cons to the, the tattoo joint um and you got to keep going back to touch it up and you got to keep shaving your hair bald if you have hair up there Ah, oh, so you have to pretty much. What if you just wanted the little piece? Like, let's say, like I wanted to just add these little parts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, then you're good. You're good to go. Yeah, if you just want to do that, just that little part. Yeah, yeah. Then you're straight. But if you have like, you know, the horseshoe thing going on, <laughs> you got you got to keep shaving off your hair. You know. So, but other than that, the results that I see are pretty good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, it used to bother me a little bit. Um, but then I started, and, and I know, and when you see it, like a, like, especially an older gentleman with, with some nice hair, 
I'm mm-hmm. like, man, you got some nice hair for your age. And, you know, some like like LeBron, for instance, you know, he just going through it. Some people just was you would you say that a genetic thing? Uh, it's a little bit of both. It's it's genetic. And then sometimes it's the way uh, men take care of their hair. Like uh, a lot of the guys who wear hats all the time. You know, your scalp, your scalp has to breathe. Mm. Uh, if it's not breathing then you know your hair starts to get thin up there because your follicles start to die you know i think what was one of my mistakes growing up uh two things one my grandmother always told me don't start shaving don't start shaving before you have to and i you know i was i I couldn't wait to get grown so i got my gillette with my folo hairs and then now i got the you know what i'm saying i got this not that it's i've seen way worse but you could tell that i started shaving way and she told me don't start this shit so what is your suggestion with shaving, like for like the young cats, it depends if they want to get hair or if they just want to not to grow the hair. What if you just don't want to have your shit dark? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel like this it, is just from years of shaving over bullshit, right? Right. Like, where does that come from? The darkness comes from uh, skin irritation. So if you if you're constantly shaving constantly shaving your skin keeps regenerating over and over and then sometimes the bacteria gets stuck under there from the sweat or whatever the case is and then it gets that little dark look so what i would suggest is stay away from the razor and just use the strictly machines like the trimmers yeah yeah, so that's mine's gotten better because i only use the andis right i only use the andis Yeah. yeah um is there any like products i know like what was that bump stopper they got uh bump stopper they got double strength bump stopper which is what i recommend the extra strength. And yeah, that, that's one of the best products you can use. And if I'm not mistaken, you just kind of like before you go to bed kind of thing. You can do it before you go to bed. And also when you wake up in the morning, do it twice. If it's really bad, you could do it twice. Yeah, I know. Um, see, I've always. But then so, so to go back to the original point I was trying to make is certain things that bothered me at one point. But then I noticed, like, for instance, when someone goes bald, like, for instance, like The Rock or uh, uh, Joe Rogan, when you just own being bald, a lot of them fools say, like, if you have a problem, to just do it and you feel so much more, like, uh, empowered by just going bald. Yeah, some guys accept it. Some guys refuse to accept it. You know, I have a guy, he he, uh, gets a haircut. But he literally has like one hair just wrapping around his entire head. That's what it looks like. He he just refused to give up, you know. <laughs> uh I, I think I'm close, man. I think I'm close. Like I, I don't know, man. I think like if I I could tell like it's really thin right here. So like if I brush it, it looks better. But like like when from wearing the hat and it's moving around, and I, you know, then it then it looks even thinner. But if mm-hmm. I like brush it and lay it down, that's how I know it's getting I think it might be time for me, man. Well, you know, I would I would definitely explore the uh, the tattooing if if that's something that you're interested in. I would I would look into that. Unless you're ready to go all the way and do the man weave. No, I'm not. I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> like well, well, the thing that, is, you know, first. Yeah, I yeah, I ain't doing the man weave. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. I can only imagine. All right, well, let's switch topics, man. How did the pandemic treat you? It's been good. It's been good to me, man. It, it just it made me uh, work on my brand a little bit more. I'm trying to release a shaving cream, my own line of shaving cream. So I've been working on that. Where and, you at with that? Well, right now I'm in the I'm a, the patenting process and the uh, just uh, getting the uh, what what do you call it the the chemist to get the whole formula down for me. And so we can get that going. It's, it's, it's a whole process. I had no idea how uh, com- complicated it was to start your own product line until I really started, you know, getting involved with it. Now, is this, has this something that you've always thought about or? It's something that I've been working on over the years. It's it's like, I think, six years in the making that I've been working on the shaving cream. I just wanted to come up with something that was multi-purpose and not just for shaving, but it's just a shaving cream that does multiple things. And it's uh, I finally came up with the right uh, formula and it's going to change the game. It's going to change the game. So this is actually the first time I've been talking. I've talked about it. Oh. On- 
Oh, that's an exclusive <laughs> joint. You got to be exclusive right now. Yeah. <laughs> the Cares <laughs> Not Be Don't the podcast, care. baby. We dropped the dyes in this motherfucker. That's it. That's uh, it. Yeah, the pandemic, man. I, I've been talking to some friends and people lately, man. What, let me ask you, what were some of your thoughts? What, what were you thinking like the first like month or two? When we're like, you know, when it was really like no one knew what the fuck was going on. What do you remember? Can you go back to those times and what were you thinking? Like, what the fuck was going on? Man, I, I had no idea what was going on. I just kept hearing uh, little things about the Corona, this Corona, that. And I was like, you know, this is probably going to pass over just like, you know, the Ebola and all these other things that popped up in the past. I said, you know, no big deal. But then, you know, I started seeing, uh, businesses closed down i started seeing uh, the hospitals fill up and i said well you know this is probably a little bit more serious than what originally i thought and so um the barber industry suffered a great deal uh through this whole this whole thing and um but they've been they've been uh, putting you know up with it very well they've been surviving and uh, i'm very proud of of my profession, you know, uh, all the barbers and, you know, the way they've handled it, you know, some of them have lost their business, but they've turned to uh, mobile barbershops, you know, they, they've just adapted to it, you know, and it's really uh, brought a lot into perspective when it comes to what it takes for you to keep your business open for a lot of people. Mm. So me... a lot of people aren't ready for it, you know? Yeah, man. Um... So I've, I've made like a little pivot too, you know, with this whole, uh, cause I worked in the restaurant industry and then I realized how much I did not want to work in the restaurant industry no more, you know? Mm -hmm. And I knew I was building something with, with the online thing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe like maybe November or something like that. I just started to start flipping merchandise and, and, and it was actually an accident. Someone, I see you doing well with that. Bro. It's, it's a thing. It's like a real thing right now. This yeah. ain't no joke now. Oh, I'm over man. 600, uh, 600 items sold. Nice. Six, and I ain't oh. even, my, my website will be out in about a week. But think about that. This all been through people just sending me like cash app and you know, that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, you know, I, what was interesting about it is I decided I wanted to make that pivot too, you know, and cause I'm like, I don't want to be in, in the restaurant business and this shit wasn't really popping, you know? And it's still struggling for a lot of people. Yeah. So and it was and it was an accident. Someone bought me a hat that said "Cares None" on it as a gift. That was mm. that's all it was. And I never even considered making merchandise. I never even thought about it. Wore that hat and some videos and some Snapchat or Snapchat and some stories. And uh, and people's like, "Oh shit, you got merch? Where can I cop?" And I'm and I and I'm like, "Oh, uh, it, it's coming." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then finally, yeah. and then I go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's one of the important things, man. It, it just gave people time to focus on things they wanted to do that they never got to do. Now, you you in the Mecca where it was bad in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, was, what was it like in New York, man? <sighs> man, it's still, it's still, we're still feeling the effects, especially when you go to Times Square, when you go to Manhattan, it's like a ghost town. I'm not used to seeing that. It's like the streets are empty. A lot of the businesses, a lot of businesses have closed out there, and it, it's it's different, man. It's different. It, I know. It, every time I've been to fucking uh, Times Square, I've been there two or three times, and it's like literally you can barely walk in the motherfucker. Yeah, I've never seen it the way it is now, though. It's definitely different. Did you watch any of the shit on uh, on, on New Year's? How weird that was. Yeah, yeah. The whole a lot of things <laughs> has been. Going have been weird man i watched the super bowl with people social distancing in the stands that, that was weird although in the super bowl there, there was kind of a lot of motherfuckers there considering they were but they were still yeah, separate you know? right. right man yeah. what, a, what a crazy I, I knew this shit got real when when uh when the nba shut down yeah I'm yeah like, oh okay when the billionaires ain't making any money this got to be a thing you know what i'm saying Yep, yep. No, I knew when it was real when they told me that I had to close the shop where I, I go to uh, take care of my clients and film my, my skits. They told us, you got to shut down. And I'm like, what? That's You're like, like is that serious? <laughs> I'm like, first of all, that's against the Constitution. You can't tell us what to do. This is our business, you know? 
So they kind of like broke the rules on that one. You know, a lot of people, they they were like, that's why a lot of people were fighting it. Right. You know, I agree that they don't have the right to liter- to tell us to close our businesses. So that, that's why a lot of people were pissed. And they were kind of like deciding, picking and choosing which businesses stay open. You know, like, oh, no, well, uh, you're essential you're, businesses, right? You're not an essential, you know, so you have to close. Like, who, who the hell are you? You know, who the fuck are you to tell me that I my business? You know, but oh, uh, Walmart and Home Depot can stay open. Like, no way, bro. Right. Um, so here's so clearly that was a thing. I, I, I see both sides of that a little bit because I'm like, well, yeah, you can't tell them. Like, I've worked hard and built this to provide for my family. You know what I'm saying? So, how the fuck you'll tell me, especially in America? But on the flip side, it's like, if this shit's as vicious as they say, yeah, and niggas ain't closing, it's only gonna get worse. Yeah, I know personally, most people are gonna say, well, I'll just take the chances, right? Yep. I had a guy, up. I had a barber on my podcast, and he explained to me that they they forced him to close the shop, and he came in the shop just to just to clean. He didn't, he wasn't even cutting; he was just cleaning. And the, and somebody called the cops on him. Mm. One of the one of the, one of the people from across the street, nosy. Knows he asked people, called the cops on him, and the cops came to the shop and asked him, what are you doing here? He said, I just came to clean my shop. Relax. <laughs> so, that's, <laughs> how that's how serious they were on it, you know? And he was forced to bring his clients to his house. You know? It's kind he, of it was supposed to be against the rules and shit, too, no? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you got to gotta make money, right? He, he had to support his family. He's got a kid, a wife, and right. so he bringing the, the people to his house. Of course, risky, but he had to do what he had to do. Now, was <clears throat> is that was that illegal? Or was it just frowned upon? It's like bring someone it, to your house. Legal because your your barber license, and this is where a lot of barbers get it twisted. You know, once you get your master barber license, it only covers you when you're in the shop, period. It only covers you where the address of that license is when you when you file for your barber license you have to put the address of where your shop's going to be so if you're not cutting hair there you, you're pretty much going against the rules and so if you're cutting in your house it's illegal it's not a commercial space it's not considered uh, you know sanit- sanitary and if you also if you're cutting in a mob- mobile barber shop which a lot of barbers don't know that's also not allowed in certain states not all but certain so can you get like a specific license to allow that or there there isn't like that? It depends. Yet? You're in. Depends. So what so about New York? Is is it is that allowed? It's not allowed, but they don't really enforce it like that. So it's sort of like, you know, uh they tell you you can't watch two movies, but you know, some people still do it anyway. They sneak into two movies. Wait, I ain't gonna lie, I've done that shit a few times. <laughs> hey, my grandmother used to do that shit. <laughs> Exactly. It's against the rules, babe. You do it, you do it. Yeah, and that's uh but see that one's even different because technically you're stealing. Right? right. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I just go to your house and cut, that's not stealing. I'm trying to provide to survive, you know? Right. Well, if you're cutting in somebody's house, you know, uh usually there's there's the the, the two most common systems in a barbershop are commission which is where the owner pays the, your taxes so they keep track of everything you do and the other one is when you rent your chair which is you have to pay your own taxes and you have to keep track of everything you do so when you cut in somebody's house nobody knows what you're doing nobody knows what you're making so in a oh, sense so that's kind of stealing from uncle sam <laughs> yeah right, in a right. sense you know what's funny? Kind of the on that topic, but kind of like pivoting. And I was talking to my buddy Steve about, you know, Steve. I'll be talking mm-hmm. about Steve all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause now that I just started like this, this clothing br- business and, and he's a business owner and he's been through it. So obviously as my best friend, I can ask him for business advice. Cause I literally have no idea, like no idea. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to school for, I'm just learning on the fly. Like I'm sure a lot of people are. Right. Um, and I was telling him that, Dude, like I just didn't know. I had no knowledge of of even, that I was even capable that I was worthy of of owning something that could provide. And I had to like learn that. 
you know, and I, and I'm, and I'm sad that I, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. Right. You know, like, it's like, no, and, 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 and I, maybe the reason why I see is because I see money coming in. Right. I, I sell a hoodie or a shirt and then, and then I, you know, I, I pay the cost and then I get the profits and then I, so I'm seeing it. So I'm like, Oh, okay, this is something. So then let me do the research, but it feels like we're taught to be consumers and not to be business. You know, How, what is your opinion on that? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Uh, we are designed by the people in the, in the business world. We are statistics. They don't want us to be their competitors. So that's why we have to put ourselves in a different mindset. Instead of us thinking, oh, well, what am I going to buy next week? You know, what do I want? to get new sneakers or this and that instead of having that mindset you have to have your mindset like yo how can i create my own sneaker how can i start my own business what do i need to save to to accomplish my own brand you know that's the type of mindset a lot if a lot of people were to have that mindset you would be surprised at things you could accomplish right i, I was telling it's funny you said that i was telling steve the tooth and again i'm just new to this game like like fresh and freshly infantly new Right. But the two things that seem like you need is one, you have to have value in yourself. You have to <clears throat> believe that you're capable of doing it. You have to have a game plan. Right. And you have to have the right people around you. You know, if you're hanging around with people who are not successful, they don't know about success. You're not going to go far. They're not going to be able to help you. You have to be around people who can actually help you and who are doing bigger things than you are, you know, and that's why I try to buddy myself with attorneys and people who know about uh, patenting and people who know uh, bankers and all type of people, because that's the, the, the best circle I have. And, and it seems like sometimes the information that, that you uh, gain from these encounters with people ain't even like hard information. You just got to know that that information is there. Right. Like it's not hard to do. So you just got to know what to do. Right, right. And it seems like that's where like, like with generational wealth and not even necessarily when it comes to the monetary, but just having someone like you said, to just that just knows, oh, you got to you got to open up this account to do this. And you got to do that to do that. And then that's all you got to do it. Then you can sign up for this grant. And you can. Right. How do you know that unless you're in the, the room of people who know how to do that? And that and I, I that's exactly my point. Like I was cutting uh, this guy's hair and he happened to work for an organization that helps people get grants. And he said, did you know that you can open up a barbershop and not even have money? You don't need money. You know, they, they would, they, I, they, you can get a grant to open up a barbershop as long as you can find a way to make it a public service, uh, like something that includes the, the, the community, you know, that you can have it to, to where it's gonna benefit somehow the community aside from just cutting hair, just add something into it that you can get a grant. I was like, wow. Yeah. And I'm, and I bet you there's all kind of those little, you know, little knickknacks of information out there that people just don't fuck. And it's almost like, it's like Loop it's out there, but it's like, it's like yeah. hidden. Yep. It's they're hidden, but they're out there. And there's a lot of people who find out about them and know about them. Right. And I, and I feel like, so what I'm trying to do is one, learn this shit as I go. But the more I learn, I'm trying to give out this information too. It's like, that's what my whole be dope shit's about. It's like, and I think the number one thing for me is understanding your value and knowing that you are capable, that you are worthy of having something. And especially, I'm not gonna just say the black community, but just the poor people community, people that ain't the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the, the haves, the have nots. It's like, we don't even know that we're, that, that, it's, that it's possible. And sometimes the, like the, the Bezos's and the Elon Musk, they seem so high and it's like, yep. oh, I'm not even gonna try cause that's dumb, you know? It's like, no, wait, they were you at one point. Yeah. And, and it takes dedication and discipline because a lot of people start, they, they always start doing some, some projects or things that they want to do, but then after a while they get bored or they'd be like, you know what, this is not going good. And they give up. So, that you know, it's a motherfucker, ain't it? Yeah. You have to continue. You can't, you can't stop and you just have to keep learning and, and just figure out how to grow more. You know, I used to, uh, I remember being young 
and just fighting discipline. Like, I would fight discipline. Like, I don't want that shit. Like, like I used to hate it. Like, why do you want me to, to have that? And then the older I got, the more I realized is, oh shit, that's what you need. That's the, that's the gold is the, that's like the, the currency is the discipline Yeah, for anything. It's like, it's like when I was uh, in my twenties, I had this crazy idea to be, to invest in, in rappers, right? Like I wanted to invest in a label and, and just get my own artists. And so I met this kid, he was super talented, like ridiculous lyrically. And I said, you know what? I'm going to invest into studio time. I'm going to invest into this kid. And he was amazing in the studio, but when it came to performing, he didn't have it. Can handle it. So I'm like, how are you gonna be an artist and not be able to perform? How what is that? Think, what do you think the issue was? He just didn't have the confidence. He didn't have the confidence. He didn't have. He was shy. You know, he was shy in front of a lot of people. He just didn't. He had that stage fright. So it just, you know, and. A lot of these these rappers, they they're not willing to put in the work and just you know uh, travel and, and do the shows and do the grind that you have to do. You know they just want they they think it's all about making the music and getting in the studio and dropping tracks and making money. That's not it's not only about that. You have to go out there and get your name out there and promote. So you know that's just one of the examples where if you're gonna get involved in something, sure you are aware of all the aspects that are involved in that. And just be prepared for that. Yeah, it's kind of like when I lost all that weight, man. So you know I lost a fuck ton of weight. And yeah. that, that shit wasn't, although it was relatively quick in the grand scheme of things, but it wasn't overnight. <clears throat> right. And there were moments while I was on my journey that like I had nights that I was fucking up. You know, mm -hmm. where I like I would have that burger that I knew I shouldn't have had, you know, and then and there was moments where I gained two, three pounds, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times and before that, and even today, I'll have moments where I get like, damn, you know, and then you're like, ah, but like you said earlier, you got to like push through those. That's where that discipline part. It's like, yeah, yeah, you got to keep going. I know you just fucked up and that's okay. Don't kill yourself. You're human. This shit is hard. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you got to trust the process, right? Trust the yeah. process. It's like me. I'm trying to get a trademark for my name, which was the Barber Artist. And they're giving me, trouble with that you know what's the, so what's the what were they saying somebody else they, got it no they're, they're just saying uh that, you know that uh the the name it's a, you know it's probably going to kind of interfere with somebody else's name that they already have blah 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 so they just like give me all this hard time so now you know i gotta pay extra money but <laughs> It's like, you know, these are obstacles that some people say, you know what, fuck that. I'm, I'm not fucking with this. I'm giving up, you know? It's just bumps on the road. You got to continue to do what you do. And you got to, you know, just can't give up. If you got a goal, just keep going. You know? Let me ask you this. What, what, what advice would you give somebody to help gain discipline? Think, think long and hard about what you want and where you want to be and what it's gonna to take to get there. Once you know how to begin the, the process, stick with it and just keep remembering, keep reminding yourself, mm. this is where I wanna be and that's where, I, this is how I wanna do it. I gotta keep going and I gotta, I gotta keep doing what I'm doing. Right, because yeah, so like to go back to the, the weight loss thing, the, what, what got me really wanting to do it in the first place was the fact that I wasn't very successful with women. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, I got to change this. <laughs> right. Yeah. I got to ask you, is this really, did this really happen or was this a joke? I couldn't even tell if this is serious or not. Did you have a kid? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I saw a newborn. I was like, wait, what? No, no, no. No, I'll put out somebody your hands with two ashy. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell is going on over here? <laughs> no, that was a joke. A lot of niggas fell for that. I didn't. Wow. Yeah. You caught me, bro. You yeah. fucking. Niggas was like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, cares none, Papa? No. <laughs> no, no, no kid, man. No kid. I, I wonder uh, how many like, motherfuckers still think I got a brand new newborn. I said I knew it, and that baby looked a little white. I knew he was hanging around all them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was hanging around them white girls. 
Man, uh, I live in white suburbia, though, man. There's no white motherfuckers around here. That's all it is. But no, no, no kid, man. And But them, them hands was ashy as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I was like, when I saw this shit, I was like, well, nigga, who let this nigga touch their baby? <laughs> I was like, wow. So I was like, I got to do it. And I knew, I, I thought people, you know, it was a black hand. They would assume, <laughs> you can't see my face. You would assume it was me. No, no. Man. You got any, You got any kids? Yeah, yeah, I got a, a daughter. She's uh, from my previous uh, relationship that I had a long time ago. She's 14. And a stepson that was raised in the same household. And uh, we're still, we still communicate. We're pretty close. Oh. They don't live in New York anymore, but yeah. Okay, okay. You ever, you ever going to dip into that, into that, that, uh, that pool again? Uh, probably not. Probably <laughs> not. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Well, because I think I've been there, done that, and uh, I, I think all the things that I'm doing now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get more into the acting thing, and I'm trying to uh, <clears throat> go out there and do a lot of things that are probably going to take time in my schedule, and I, I really don't see that, and that's, that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize how much time kids take from, from, from your day. So if, if you're going to get involved with that, you got to make sure that you don't have a lot of things going on because it's going to slow you down. Especially if you want to do it right, right? Exactly. exactly. You, can be a, you can be a fucking <clears throat> bum-ass da dad, you know, and just not be around, but then that's weak sauce, you know? Right, right. So you, you have to just do your best to figure out a way if that's what you want. I don't see it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, man. I don't, I don't know either, man. I right, listen. Right. I'll tell you this: if it was to happen, if it was to happen, I think that I would be a fantastic father. You know, right. because I just I, I grew up without a father, you know, and I and I knew mm -hmm. what it was like, and it, and and then I know that that dudes don't get really taught any kind of masculine energy when there's no male figure around to teach them that. Mm -hmm. I, I had to learn all that shit on my own, you know. Right, right. Um, and I know that that term masculinity gets kind of shitted on nowadays, but I'm still cares none. I'm I toxic masculinity is trash, but but real masculinity, I fucks with that heavy, to be honest. And uh, if I was to have a kid, I would teach him. I would try to teach him as best what I know what it be is to be a, a real man, not just a right. guy with a dick. You know what I'm saying? Like an actual man and what that means. Cause, and I'm 37, just turned. <clears throat> and I'm scratching the surface of what it means to be a man. You know what I'm saying? 37 years old. All right. I remember being 21 years old. Like, man, I'm grown. <laughs> okay. A lot of dads out there kind of underestimate how important they are to their kids. A lot of, you know, especially the ones who just like decide to leave relationship or whatever the case is and leave the kids behind. You know, like I said, I had a stepkid that I met when I met my ex. She had a son and, uh, you know, the little kid got attached to me and he's grown now. He's grown and he still like calls me for advice. He still calls me dad. And we were just together for five years. Right. And he got well, that. Attached. Well, I'll the tell you this grown. about you. I'll tell you this huh? about you from just from what I can tell, just from our few interactions and watching your videos, man. And I, and you know, I don't sugarcoat to nobody. I don't lie to nobody. I'm very honest and brutal. You have a good vibe, like like Thank like real talk. You and you seem like a like a wise old soul. If that, if that makes any sense, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like you'd be the nigga who would teach the young cat, "Hey man, let me let me teach you how to do it." Especially in, in the barber shop, it even made more sense. Like you out there spitting wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And well, I, that, that, I appreciate that about you, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That, that, that's part of my job at the school. I get asked all the time for advice, uh, work advice, life advice, all type of stuff. You know, I'm dealing with uh, young kids. I'm dealing with older people, people older than me. You know, so. Would you say when you, when, when you get asked for advice, because I'm in a situation where I get asked for a lot of advice and shit too, you know? Mm -hmm. Would you say that holds you more accountable? <laughs> Hold me accountable for the results, the outcomes more. No, not necessarily for them, but like, so the way I'm look, I guess, let me just say this. The way I look at it is if I'm going to be out here, quote unquote, preaching, I would be a damn fool to not live the shit that I'm preaching. Right. So I kind of, I feel like, a, 
the, the more I talk about, in my opinion, you should try this, that mm -hmm. keeps me trying this. Because I'm gonna tell you, you should try this, and then I'm not trying this. You know what I'm saying? But it's funny you say that because I just posted a meme in my stories, in my Instagram stories the other day. I said, when I speak, I speak from experience. Mm. So for all the naysayers that don't want to believe truth, that's on them. But I speak, you know, from experience. Yeah, you know, I, and I, I, you know what, to be honest, I go from experience too. Now, do you believe that you can learn something without actually going through it. You can learn, of course, of course, it's called studying. <laughs> right? Th that's so true. And I feel like a lot yeah. of people like, I do believe experience is the best teacher, right? Obviously. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. then you like, oh shit, that happened to me. Let me not do that shit no more. Right. But, but we were talking a little bit earlier about the not like there's knowledge out there. There's so yeah. much. And with YouTube and the internet, like nigga, we good. Yes. See, when I was growing up as a kid, we didn't have all this stuff. We didn't have, I mean, we had internet, but we didn't have, uh, uh, we didn't have uh, the, the iPads and the iPhones and all this stuff that they have now. It's, it's like, you know, you can just learn so much online. It's easy. It's so easy. And then you got like social media where motherfuckers are legitimately teaching you they shit. <laughs> like, like, mm -hmm. the, like uh, the top five things, if you want to be a barber, top five things not to do, or, you know what I'm saying? That there's all, you want, you're trying to grow your Instagram. This is how you do it. Top five things. It's like, right. whoa, that shit's out there. So it's like, there really is no excuse to at least get started. There's people getting rich out there on social media. Bro, <laughs> I, social media is like changed my life. A hundred thousand on TikTok, you can start getting monetized. You know that, right? Oh, TikTok is monetizing you now? 100,000, no, 100,000 followers. If you reach that on TikTok, you can monetize. Really? They start sending you, yeah, they start sending you offers to monetize your vids. Because I, I know YouTube was the only one doing that, right? Yeah, but now TikTok is also doing it. Yeah, TikTok trying to take over the world. Eh? <laughs> and this, I am getting this from them now. It's called uh, an influencer fund. They have an influencer fund which pays you. Okay. I think uh, every every month or every couple months. I mean, it's not much, but they they give you money. Something. Yeah. So it's yeah. more incentive to like, oh shit, let me get on this. Yeah. So they pay you to post stuff. Now, would you say you have to post daily, pretty much? I feel like the whenever I see like a big account that's doing something, them motherfuckers posting a lot. Well, well, I know. I know accounts that at first they post a lot, and like myself, I used to post a lot, but now I don't. I post probably like maybe once a week or sometimes I'll, I'll get in the mood and I'll post three or four times a week, but sometimes I'll post once every week or once every week and a half. I try not to go two weeks. Do you see but, the, do you see the, has the growth changed or it stays the same? You get the same views? No, it goes up and down. It goes up and down. You lose, you lose followers, you gain followers, you know, of course with, the way I post, I lose followers sometimes. And then when I do post, sometimes I still lose followers because they don't like the videos I post or whatever the case is. But a lot of the guys that I know that are big, they, they post uh, maybe Regularly. once every week or once every two weeks. I know guys that are big and they post very, you know, they don't post that much that often. But then I know other people who are, who are up there and they post like almost twice a day, three times a day. And, and, you know, it's funny. And then I've seen that where they post them two, three times a day and yet they still don't got fucking big numbers. Right. Right. So, so it comes down to your content too. comes down to your content. Right. Remember Instagram, like Insta there was definitely a shift, like maybe two a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I think I was, I'm telling you like the organic reach was high. I remember when I first got in the game, 100, 200,000 views a pop. Now, yeah. you know, and if you're not doing reels, you really can't get no numbers. It's like, it's like impossible to do. It's, it's screwed up. Instagram is screwed up. That's why I'm, I'm switching over to TikTok as my main platform, honestly. It's fucked up. And, and the thing about me and Instagram is that's, a, that's like my baby. That's what I grew with. Those, and it's like a community. <laughs> it really is. You know how it is. It's a community of people who fuck with you. And it's like, yeah. I, and I, I want to stay faithful to them cats because they're the ones that got me to where I am. But it's like, man, I got to, you know, you got to grow your shit too. 
Yeah. And yep. Instagram slowed it down. <clears throat> like like 80, 90 percent. Yeah. And so that's why I had to change my content. I had to get a little bit more extreme with my stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there was definitely a change. I was like, wait a minute, there's like a like pornos. <laughs> like, yeah. Once I changed my, my uh content, then I started getting a better response, you know. Cause and a lot of people ask me, well, why did you start doing this? And oh man, I got so much, I got so much um uh, uh feedback from people, some some positive, some negative but really from my job also, because I'm a teacher at the school, at the barber school. So Ooh, my boss- yeah. What would you get? <laughs> my, bo- my boss was like, he calls me to the office one day and he's like, uh, I got to talk to you again. Can you have a seat for a second? <laughs> he hit you with that? <laughs> yeah. Like what, what's going on? He was like, um, why are you posting girls with big asses on your Instagram? <laughs> You know, some of the students are calling me and telling me about this. They, really? Some of the students follow you. Yeah. And I'm they, and I'm like, well, they know I'm an Instagram comedian. And then he's like, yeah, but do you have to post the, the girls, the naked girls? And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's just part of what I'm doing now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but then check this out, Chris. When they when he started seeing students coming in to sign up from my Instagram, he's like, you know what? Yeah, it's I actually right. know. I know a big booty bitch. Keep yeah. doing, keep <laughs> doing, what you're doing. Just to try not to say the school's name too much. Oh man, that's first of all, who's <laughs> what? Like, I wonder were people like telling, or they just was like, oh, you see this, or is it like a, or were they telling on you? Well, some people were just telling him or just showing him and then other people were trying to be spiteful. I was actually getting people calling the school, calling the school, like my followers, my own followers, calling the school to tell, uh, tell my boss, Oh, what kind of school are you running here? Look at your teacher. What, are, what kind of videos is he making here? Check uh, out his brand. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Man, you really? Follow me. That's fucked up. Oh, followers, bro. And, you know, so you got some followers out there that are cool and they support you. And then you got followers that are just watching you to watch your downfall. They're waiting for that. So I've learned that, you know, you can't trust everybody. Isn't that disgusting, man? Let me let let me. What's your opinion on this? I feel like people who are winning and what I mean by winning is going after it, whether you got it or not. When you're going after it, you're trying hard. You're putting your resources together. you're, You're trying to do something. Those right. people don't be hating like that. Like if you, most people, I'm, I'm sure there's one-offs, but for the most part, the people who I see going after something, creating something, building something, have too much, man, like, like let's, let's all do, you know, let's all do it. Do you mm-hmm. agree with that statement? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally agree that some people are going to support you and some people are not. And, and you know, the weirdest thing that I, I've, I realized that sometimes there are people who are above you, above what you're trying to do. They're up there already, and they're hating on you. They don't want you to reach the level they're on. I've learned that, too. There's people out there like that as well. So it's all levels of people that are going to be uh, hating on you as you go along. But you got to find the people in your circle. Like I said, you got to get a circle that is supportive of what you do. Yeah, I just don't, I don't agree with that shit, man. I don't agree with hating on the numb up. Even if, like, for instance, I don't like country music. I don't really listen to, I don't fuck with country music. Although I do <laughs> love, I do love Nashville, though. Nashville is a good time. Right. But I don't really fuck with the music. Um, right. But you ain't never going to hear me hate on some, on some country music, ever. I'm going to be saying, hey, it ain't for me, but shit. He out here working, growing, making music, doing this thing. Like, that's the way I look at it. I can't, I, I don't, I can't even fathom, even like people who thumbs down shit on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like, I I just personally could never do that. Even if I was like, yeah, this is a shit video. I couldn't do it. You ever thumbs down a video? No, not on, not on YouTube. I have on Netflix, though. I had to, bro. Some of those movies are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, to me, that's a little different. And I be, it was, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's rating them. That's a little different. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about like somebody, I guess maybe it's the same thing. <laughs> Like, you know, I guess, yeah, I, you know, I just saw a movie last night 
called the mm. uh, the little things. You ever you see that one yet? No. Like Denz mm. Denzel and Jared Leto just came out on HBO. Mm. And uh, listen, I'm a Denzel guy. That's my boy. And I, I don't know, man. This one didn't hit the mark for me, man. It's like the mm. first time I felt that way with a Denzel movie. Yeah, thumbs down. No, I, and I still didn't, but I could see myself. You know, I I, I thumbs down in my brain. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, thumbs down, <laughs> one, two stars down. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't understand like, like jealousy. I don't believe in that because and, and selfishly, the reason why I don't believe in that shit is because if I see truth killing it, that makes me believe I can kill it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're just another human being who shits, pisses, eats, you know what I'm saying? You're just another human walking this earth just like I am. So if you can kill it, so can I. Well, that's the thing. Haters are usually people who want to do what you're doing, but they feel that they can't. Or, you know, so, so you know, they, they just, that's just the, the type of vibes they have. They're negative and they feel like they can't get what you're doing. They can't get to where, where you're at. They can't do what you're doing. So they're just going to hate on that. Have you ever experienced this? I'm sure you have. Someone will come at you hating on some hating shit, right? And then uh, I'll respond. Like somebody say, oh man, look at this dude hairline, it's bogus. And I'll be like, yeah, man, my shit is fucked up. And they'll be like, oh shit, you responding, man. I love your shit, man. I'm just fucking around, da, 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 da. I'm like, I thought she was all trying to come at me. You know what I'm saying? It's well, weird. As, as you know, the barbering business is very, very competitive. So there's a lot of that stuff that goes on in the barbershops. And, and sometimes in the barber school, you know, there, there are barbers who come in, they're just there to get their license. They already have the experience, but it's your, your job to teach them. And they have to sit in the classroom and listen to you and, and pass the class. So they're sitting there like they already know everything. You, why, well, you know, yeah, who are you? you teach me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, they have that attitude. So when you're cutting, you're teaching, they're like, it's like that. They, they're, they're, again, they're just arrogant. They're completely against what you're teaching. They're like, oh, you know, I don't do it like that. And I'm like, well, that's why you don't have your license yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> but th that's just part of life, man. And you know, another thing I've learned, Chris, I don't know how you deal with this, but whenever you get the negative comments, or, you know, whatever from, you know, on the Instagram or social media platform, I just don't respond. I don't do it anymore. I stopped. I said, you know what? If you want to post whatever you want to post in my comments, go ahead. I'll probably let somebody else deal with you. Somebody else is probably going to, you know, reply to that. If not, then, oh, fuck it. I'm not going to waste my time. The you funny know? part is, is it still actually helps you because you're getting engagement under your post. So even the yeah. shit. Yeah. Right. Um, so the, I, I, I'll be honest, though. I don't get a ton. I got more when my shit was more and more viral, when it was in the Explore page a lot more. And, um, Cause like, but like the people in my community, like my followers, like mm. they all kind of fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't get a ton of that unless it goes, like if I post my shit on someone else's page for advertisement, mm -hmm. then I'll get more shitty comments, you know? Um, a lot of times I like to try to fight fire with, with fire, not fire, but like, I just agree with them. Like, yeah, man, you right. <laughs> right, right. So, and it, that just that disarms anyone like okay like what are you trying to say you know mm -hmm. but as soon as you try to go into and going back and forth i've learned i remember in the very beginning i made some jokes about the special needs i made some of those jokes and oh, man. <laughs> shit was hilarious. see i i just don't engage anymore because i realized that when you engage it always opens the possibility of there being a confrontation and you know I, i'm a public figure, I would consider myself a public figure because I'm in the public. I'm out in the open. Everybody knows where I'm at. Everybody knows where I work. They know what I do. So, you know, I did respond at, at one time. This is when I was first starting out. And it was going to get to the point where it was going to become a physical confrontation, you know, and, and the person actually threatened to come to where I was at. And I was like, you know what? What am I doing? You know, <laughs> it's not worth it. <laughs> what am I doing? I was raised in the Bronx. You know, I don't want to go back to being that person. You know, I'm a whole different person. I'm I'm a teacher. I'm I'm doing Instagram. You know, I'm I'm under the public eye. So why the hell am I gonna entertain this moron? You know, and put myself down to his level for what? 
Yeah, you know, logically, doing, it doesn't make sense, right? Right. I'm doing bigger things. I have bigger things in mind. So that that's why I decided just not to entertain it anymore. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to say I always respond with a, like agreeing, but I try to get bulletproof, you know, and like and, and it's funny once you get in this game and people because a lot of people will say, man, I don't know how you can take, you know, those negative comments. And in the beginning, that shit was a little tough. Right. Yeah. I, but once you get used to it, then then you almost become numb to it. He's like, OK, yeah, that just kind of comes with it. Right. Everybody. Hey, everybody has the right to it. And, you know, I've heard my 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 comments with all the stuff I post, you know, people's. <laughs> All I get it all the time, bro, all the time, and you know, uh, I've 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 gotten accused of exploiting women, and I'm like, you know, I'm not exploiting women. They're actually trying to promote themselves. They're trying to promote their OnlyFans. They're trying to promote their brand. So I'm not exploiting anything. I'm just, you know, contributing to what they're trying to do as well. You know, they're trying to right. Know, there's a fair exchange in that situation. Exactly. So it's not like you're forcing them. Like, like I, if you don't show some yeah. ass, I'm gonna fuck you. Up. Not, <laughs> you know? yeah. Some of them you actually reach out to me. They're like, "Hey, I'd love to be in one of your videos." I'm like, "All right, come on down to the bomb shop. Let's do it." You yeah. Know? How long you been? How long you been on in the social media world? Uh, I would say close to four years now. Close to four years. Mm -hmm. So you was about a year before me. I was actually gonna stop, Chris. <laughs> My oh. second. My second year, I said, you know what, this is not, not it's not going to work out. You know, I can't see myself doing this long term. And so I stopped posting for like three weeks. Right. And this is where I realized this is bigger than just posting funny videos. There's a, another layer to this that I didn't know about until I stopped for those those three weeks. So when the third week came, I got a I got a DM. From, from a person and they said, hey, you haven't posted for a while. What's going on? I'm like, ah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to retire. I'm, I'm probably not going to do this anymore. And they're like, no, nah, man, your videos have helped me out so much. I had a, a, a substance abuse problem and just me watching your videos just kind of helped me get through it. It brightened my, ad my attitude, my day. It just really helped me. You got to keep posting, bro. Do not stop. And I'm like, really? My videos did that. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I realized that some people actually look forward to your content out there. And it helps them out, you know? And a lot of people tell me, man, you, you just keep posting your funny stuff, man. Don't, don't stop. Man, if that ain't the truth, I don't know what is, man. I, I've i gotten those before, too, you know? And you know me, I'll post them motherfuckers, too, just to kind of show it's like, I understand now that this is just like you said it. It is bigger than just posting funny videos. Yeah. When a motherfucker, yeah. I remember in the very beginning, I got some crazy shit too. I remember the one dude was like, "No, this is no joke. I ain't trying to one up. This literally just would happen." The dude was like, "Bro, I was I was going to kill myself. I put this on my on my mom. Make sure I was going to kill myself. Right. Started videos, started laughing, decided not to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, and this is the very beginning, just fucking around, kind of. And yeah. I'm like. Oh, so now I kind of felt like I owe it to the universe to keep doing like not even me, like just the you I owe it to keep doing it. Because right. if you can actually do something like that, that if one person that is to me, I think it's a blessing to be alive, right? So if yeah. he's now alive because of you and he's like, why would you lie about that? Right? Like, why would you? I mean, right. I, so I it, I kind of felt like I, it's, I have an obligation now to do it. Yeah, because it now it gives you a purpose. I was like, man, I thought this was just me dropping funny videos to promote my brand. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stop. But once I realized there's more to it where people actually look forward to your stuff, look forward to, you, to your, your content for more positive, a more positive reason, now it gives me more of a, of a purpose. And your shit, and your, your content personally, at least in my opinion, is informative a lot of the times. I try to make it educational for the barbers as well, as far as, you know, try to every now and then I, I put in some educational stuff, but, you know, I try to just mix it up every now and then. Yeah. Which, which, which I like, and I kind of do that too. And I know like when you go on YouTube and you, and you know, you type in like, how can I grow this shit? How can I keep going? They all say, stay in your niche, right? 
Right. And uh, and I would say my niche would have been comedy related, mm -hmm. but I do feel like I'm more than comedy. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I want to make a cooking tutorial. Sometimes I want to motivate. If I if I'm being honest, my best trait is in inspiring motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Uh, well, you go ahead. I found out something also recently. I'm actually the first ever and in the world right now. I'm, I'm the first ever barber instructor skit comedian instagram comedian ever first one ever <laughs> oh well, that's dope you're the, you're the goat and i'm bitch. the only one in the world right now doing <laughs> I just no nah, there's got to be nobody else is doing that nobody barber instructor instagram comedian none you won't find it <laughs> you should Look probably put it. that in your your ig right? like <laughs> the the one and only literally <laughs> pioneer i'm the pioneer well and so there's your niche <laughs> that's your fucking niche nigga, you know no but like sometimes i made the, the fucking videos for tutorials i do my walk on duncans and she like just and that's not really funny you know what i'm saying i think funny bro the walk but I, did, I didn't do it to be funny though i think what happened was i'm just a silly motherfucker you know what i'm saying well you know i got my own niche with the coffee you know that right with the decaf no yeah, I used to do it every time in the mornings. I used to do uh, my stories before I started. Uh, okay, I remember that. I remember that. My funny videos throughout the day. But I would start with drinking the coffee. And I I'm, I always promote decaf, you know? So... Um, why? 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 <laughs> he said, why? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> it's the coffee that everybody hates, you know? It's the coffee that everybody shits <laughs> on. So I'm like, you know... And it, it, I like decaf because it kept keeps my hands steady. Wait, wait, you know? wait, wait, wait! You drink decaf? <clears throat> of course, of course. <laughs> and I even started up a. I don't know if you look at my hashtags, but I started a little kind of like hashtag called Team Decaf, which is me and my boy Pete. That he's on my videos with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> we, we, I, I call us Team Decaf because he's always arguing with me about coffee and how he throws out my decaf sometimes. He does throw my coffee out sometimes when I'm drinking it. Just bogus. Then, That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Stop drinking that <laughs> shit. Stop drinking Bustelo. <clears throat> some I, more Bustelo. So, yeah. Have like a, so you like the taste of coffee. You just like coffee. I like coffee. I love coffee. Yeah. But you don't just, like the caffeine. I can't drink too much of the caffeine. Uh, like, like I said, it keeps my hands steady uh, when I'm cutting hair, when I'm doing things. If I, if I drink regular coffee, I get the shakes, man. Yeah, you be too fucking. Yeah, decaf yeah, is no, You do designs and shit, so you got to be even yeah. more careful. Yeah, yeah. What would you say yeah. now? I'm going to get out of here because I know we're getting on an hour now. I told you an hour. <clears throat> let, me, let me ask you, what, what is your... I know you're a master, so you probably do all of the shit. What's your favorite thing to do when you cut? Like, like just... So I'm sitting down, and what are you like? What's your, your go-to? What do you know you're going to kill a game? Is your linings? Is it your designs? Is your shape? You know, what is it? Uh... Man, I'm I'm just I tried it. I tried my entire career to be well rounded, so I could I could actually say I do everything pretty good. What what I like to do, what I prefer to do, is uh, designs. I think it's like my that's my uh, therapy right there when I do designs, and it just allows me to do something amazing on someone's head and just create. You know from my imagination. And you do it all freehand, right? It's just all, there's no stencils and no dumb shit like that, right? It's all freehand, but it depends. If somebody wants like a, a face, a portrait or something like that, I might have to use a picture. And uh, in some cases, if it's a certain type of design, like a logo, I might do a little white pencil before I do uh, the trimmer, but most of the time it's freehand. Most of the time. Do the, uh, <coughs> I always when I so I you know I used to cut a little bit of hair myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, really? yeah, for like uh, through college, I used I all I did I offered <laughs> I called it the 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 seven dollar holla. Mm. <laughs> so it was through college. Uh, <clears throat> it was seven bucks. I give you mm. a one and a lining. That's it. Mm. <laughs> I had like a clientele about ten folks though, and being broke in college, shit. Every two weeks, I knew I was going to get about a good little 70 $80. Like, it kind of came through, you know? Yeah, but I just yeah. never learned the all the fade. I just knew I can cut you with the one, and I can line you up because I was decent at that part. 
Um, I always thought about this invention, though, and it might be out. What's that? Like a pen that's, mm -hmm. that lines you up. Is that out? A pen that lines you up? Yes. Instead mm. of like, so you know, you got the and this, and it's like that long, right? So you go, mm. what about like literally, hold on, hold on, like literally something like this, mm -hmm. and you could like literally, is there, is there a technology for that out right now? Uh, there's so many different products out right now. They have airbrush. You can airbrush your hairline. Uh, they have a little, a little. It, it cuts? Is a, no, it's an airbrush. You know, like the airbrush. How you, oh, okay. You, no, I'm talking about like actual cutting. <clears throat> So like I can uh, get in that corner and just <clears throat> like if you can uh, find a blade that's this small. They have they had a a trimmer that was called the tattoo. It was made by I think Wall, and the tattoo was a trimmer, but it was a tiny little blade, like that. So it allowed you to do details. They they were trying to push it for for designs, but nah. Maybe the technology wasn't good, but I would think think about it. Tell, tell me if I'm crazy. If you can find something with like a pinpoint, now mm -hmm. I don't even know how you can get a blade, but imagine this is a blade where you can really get them corners. I feel like that'd be a cool invention if, if it's possible. Right. I mean, there's always, uh, Barbara's always coming up with different techniques. There's a barber I know that he uses a magnifying glass. And while he's cutting your hairline, he puts the magnifying glass over his eye. Like a monocle or some shit? Like, you know? <laughs> Super zoom in, yeah. a okay. super zoom in, and why he's cutting your hair like he's real detailed. So, these I mean, guys that are, seems that seems like a smart move. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, there's guys out there doing some unique stuff. Do you wear the? Uh, I saw one cat with the, uh, with the light. Do you, do you do you rock the light? I do that when I do my house calls. Okay. Sometimes the the lighting in the house or the room you're cutting in isn't that good, and then you need that that light. Yeah. But at the mm -hmm. shop, the lighting is real good. At the shops, the lights are supposed to be good, and a lot of shops it's, it's not. And uh, yeah, but I didn't yeah. realize until getting into the social media game how important fucking lighting is. Yes, and a barber it's shop. Yes. Every barber shop video, even this shit. Like I got oh, the yeah. little soft boxes and everything going on. You know what I'm saying? So I try to get my little, you know, I look mm -hmm. kind of good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't realize how important fucking lighting was. Yes. Yes. Uh, lighting. Uh, in a barbershop, uh, the three most important things is the lighting. Of course, uh, the barber chair has to be comfortable. And the workstation, has you have to have a decent workstation, the right, the right amount of space to put your stuff on, you know? Right, right, right. Oh. What about, like, do you, do you sweep between each cut, or do you let it sometimes go a little bit? I try to sweep, uh, sweep between each cut, because sometimes it's unprofessional. When there's a bunch of hair on the floor and you're letting your, your next client walk all over the hair. <laughs> right. I would hear like, nigga, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. get this shit. <laughs> hey, nigga, tell people where they can find you at, man. Uh, uh, Instagram, at Truth the Barber Artist, and TikTok, uh, YouTube. Uh, it's all the same, Truth the Barber Artist. Mm -hmm. uh, y'all can find me at Chris Cares None. Most of y'all already know this on all platforms. I got a, I got a website coming. Yep, yep. Hey, got, got a website. I can't wait that that's coming out. Paid some good money for it too, so you better be fucking working. Um, I want to say thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate this. When you get your shit, man, give me on. I'll be on. Let me know. Definitely, man. Appreciate. It. I got to bring your minds. That's next. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm we, so you know we doing that wing review, right? And we want to come to New York and and get some of them wings, so we can do a couple more episodes out there. You know, perfect spot for you. Oh, well, hold on now. Hold on now. We know wings now, man. You, you, I got right? the perfect spot for you. I'm, we going to see. We going to see. Run for your money. I'm telling you. All right. All right. Because I, right now, I kind of feel like, like I know what I'm talking about. Yep. This place is serious. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I appreciate you, man. And I'm going to see you soon. All right, bro. All right, Chris. All right. Thank you, bro, bro. And stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you too, man. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> All right, man.